Glory to Jesus Christ. Glory forever. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Off with their heads. Again, I say, off with their heads. This familiar line from the Queen of Hearts in Alice's Adventures in Wonderland brings to mind an image each of us is familiar with. The guilty subject is brought before the king or queen to be judged for what they have done or what they have failed to do. The individual pleads their case and asks that his or her life be spared. And sometimes the person's life is spared, but only if they do something difficult for the king. Other times, the person has to sacrifice his or her life to pay for what they've done. And to us, this might seem quite severe. What could possibly one have done that requires the death of another? Alice's Adventures in Wonderland notes that the queen was never willing to show forgiveness. The book states, the queen had only one way of settling all difficulties, great or small. Off with his head, she said, without even looking around. This character, the man in this morning's gospel, are the exact opposite of what you and I are each called to do in our lives. Just as Christ forgave those who crucified him, we must be willing to forgive. We mustn't forget that the man in debt to the king wasn't the only person impacted for not paying what he owed. The king not only required that the man be sold into slavery, but also his wife, his children, all they that possessed, that they be sold. Can you imagine the pain this man must have felt after hearing the king's decision? He immediately prostrates himself, asks for patience, and promises to pay the king back in full. This heartfelt plea deeply moves the king to the point where the entire debt is forgiven. And you would think that the king's example would have a similar impact on the man. After all, everything he had in life, his family, his possessions, were not taken away. Yet, it doesn't. Not long after being forgiven everything, the man hardens his heart to the person who owes him money. The ultimate outcome of this man is a warning to us. As followers of Christ, we can never harden our hearts we must be willing to forgive those who wrong us, no matter the wrong done against us, whether done deliberately or by accident. While meditating on this morning's gospel, I could not stop thinking about the Our Father. It's a prayer we're all familiar with and pray frequently. And the most common translation of this prayer, which we'll be praying momentarily in the liturgy, states, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And some argue that a better translation of the prayer would be, forgive us our debts, as we have forgiven our debtors. This prayer that we all know echoes the central message of this morning's gospel. If we seek forgiveness from God, or a family member, or a friend, we must not withhold mercy from those who wrong us. And depending on what has occurred, true forgiveness might take some time, as the wound that has been felt is likely very deep. We want to forgive, but the pain or the anger we're feeling makes it difficult to do so. And this is especially true when someone we love has been hurt. Yet, as time marches on and we have time to reflect and to pray, complete, heartfelt forgiveness is possible. The Church has gifted us the sacraments of ways of encountering our Lord's forgiveness. In confession, we approach God and ask to be healed of our sinfulness. We ask our Heavenly Father to be patient with us, just as the man in this morning's Gospel. Spiritual growth takes time, and ridding ourselves of our sinful tendencies is a great challenge that we all face. Additionally, we receive divine forgiveness every time we partake of Holy Communion. God the Father giving his Son, Jesus, to the world for the salvation of all is an act of supreme love. And while Jesus remains present among us in the Eucharist, we must be at liturgy to receive him. Initiative is required on our part to not only come to church, 
but to prepare by praying, by fasting, in order to receive him. Our Heavenly Father nourishes us every time we go to meet him at liturgy. The heavenly bread, which spiritually nourishes us, also intimately unites us to Jesus. And despite our sinfulness, our Heavenly Father remains faithful to us and answers our prayer to have the Holy Spirit descend on us and to sanctify the gifts present before us. Moved by heartfelt repentance, we approach the chalice and we receive forgiveness for our sins. As we journey these next two weeks in the middle of the Dormitions fast, let us use this time to be extra willing in showing forgiveness. The Church has gifted us the various fasting seasons, the, the Dormitions Fast, the Apostles Fast, the Philip Fast, and the Great Fast, to help draw us closer to God and to reflect more on our spiritual life. When we find ourselves unwilling to forgive another, let us ask ourselves, why? And remember how God has repeatedly been patient with us. Ultimately, we must strive to always be forgiving. When we do show forgiveness, others will see Christ in us and working through us. Glory to Jesus Christ.